that that just happened was the scariest thing to have happened to me out here so far. Whew. driving with eyes like that. There. There was a lot more snow out than there was last time, but um, it's manageable, although I did bring chains just in case. Oh my gosh. You can see I... Uh... <gasps> I was going along like totally fine and I just got sucked in off to the side on the trestle and I like hit the railing and I almost couldn't get out. Holy smokes. It was just like all of a sudden, boom, sucked over. I checked my truck and it seems okay. <clears throat> like my mirror got pushed in, but I don't see anything bad on the truck. I think that was maybe from me. Dicey. Dean's Rocio. <laughs> I mean, I've got good winter tires with studs on them. <laughs> I don't see any other scrapes or anything. Lucky. That that just happened was the scariest thing to have happened to me out here so far. If that railing wasn't there, I probably would have gone off <laughs> and died. Another kind of sad realization I just see this morning as I was getting this coat on, this is the new used purple coat I got for work. It's great, except the zipper is no good. So you zip it up and then it starts to open. And I had tested the zippers out in the store and they were fine then. It seems like it's like one of those intermittent things. Secondhand shopping is a bit of a gamble sometimes, or it's a bit of a gamble all the time, really. Um, I usually look things over pretty good and I knew that there was like a few flaws with this coat, but the zipper seemed okay and I never really did it over and over again to ensure it was good. <laughs> so, with that said, we are back to team green. You need coats with these zippers, these big plastic ones. These are the best zippers. That other one, now that I really look at it, those fine teeth are no good. Anyway, we're back to green, green and bluish purple. Ah, feels good in a way. You know, like this zipper. I mean, I've had this coat for like, 13 years and these zippers are amazing. There are stairs under there. I'm shocked you guys. I'm shocked I don't have like a big scratch along my truck. I think the running board it is sticks out like it's proud to the rest of the truck. So I think it hit the wood along the bottom and that's probably what kept the, the rest of the truck off. Whew. Okay, the stairs are exposed now. The fact of the matter is, is it just takes me probably double the amount of time to get down in the winter and I just have to accept that. The stairs end here. I'm gonna snowshoe my way over there and kind of pack down a bit of a trail so that I can bring my, my gear down. <sighs> it's 
beautiful out. This is the dilemma I'm in. <sighs> like this pack isn't that heavy. It's about 20 pounds, but I have camera gear. Normally I would just hike down with everything, but the conditions are pretty sketch. <sighs> and as much as I don't want to bring up the sky mule, like haul the whole rope up and do the whole thing, I think it's in my best interest because I need to make sure I don't get hurt. Okay, down to where my pack landed. And I see some tracks going all the way kind of where, you know, there's like an animal trail over there. Looks like probably deer, but that's over there is where the cougar scat was found last year. And also, something came from over there, which is sort of the same area. And went down through there. Huh. I do have a trail cam <laughs> buried in the snow. A lot of snow. Whew. It's minus six in here. My goodness, it's like 10 to three, I'm freezing. It's been taking a really long time to get the fire to burn well. I put my snowsuit on and I finally seem to have it where it's going pretty good, but it's still like minus five in here. I sort of feel like there's a couple of like things I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to go out and get a little bit more wood, I think. What was the other thing? Oh yeah, I need to spray foam a bit more. Uh, because at the block, like the, between the rafters, the blocking, when I was up there last time, I noticed, like I could see some cracks and I can see a few in the gable end windows. As much as I don't want to, I need to go out and get some firewood or I might run out. gonna kind of uh, pick stuff that's already down. Okay, I think I got a decent haul. I'm like uh, just enjoying it out here. It's really beautiful and warm now because I've been moving. And um, I'll take this long stuff that's down and just cut it where it's a little bit more flat. It's just really steep right here. But I'll do that. But look at how beautiful it is. It's snowing. I hope that this camera can capture that. Sometimes this camera is a bit limiting, I feel like. I've actually been trying to purchase a new camera and a little bit more camera gear for a bit now and through Amazon. And I couldn't figure out why my orders weren't going through and they basically would disappear. For the life of me, I couldn't figure it out and I spent hours on the phone with Amazon and what ended up happening was that my account was put on hold because it was suspected to be um, a third party had invaded my account, which is true because I got scammed 
through a false Amazon scam back in last October. So I'm finally just sorting that through with Amazon to get this account released and to verify that it's me actually trying to make these purchases. I'm still dealing with the consequences of that scam from last October. And ever since then, I have been using Delete Me, who is kindly sponsoring today's video. Delete Me is a hands-free online subscription service that gets rid of people's personal information that's being sold online by data brokers. And data brokers are businesses that search the internet, they collect personally identifiable information, they package it up, and then they sell it to anyone that's willing to buy it, including scammers. Identity theft, while it's been around for a really long time, during the pandemic in 2020, identity theft skyrocketed like 29.4% more when the world resorted to having to function online. Unfortunately, what ended up happening as a result is that a lot of people went into financial duress and they resorted to theft as a means of survival. I think that we've all done our best to like get back to normal, whatever normal is, but to be honest, like the toothpaste is out of the tube and we are all at a larger risk of identity theft now. I've mentioned many times before, I'm not tech savvy. I don't know computers well. I just don't have the time, the patience, the knowledge. I don't trust myself to sit there and remove all the bits of my own personally identifiable information from the hundreds of data broker sites that are out there. So that is why I personally use, I trust and I recommend Delete Me as they are the number one privacy information removal service since 2010. So I recommend them, you guys, if you wanna check them out, use the link in my description, you can get 20% off. You can make custom removal requests and you can get your first privacy report in just seven days. made chili leftovers again and some really delicious homemade sourdough bread a little squirrel got into apparently Things went okay. I um, I don't know why, since I stay in here, I just don't sleep as well. Like, I was worried about keeping the stove going, so I stayed awake till almost one, and, I, and it burned out every two hours. I slept good once I got to sleep, and I was totally warm enough with the sleeping bag. It got to six degrees in here, though. One thing I've noticed that the, is that there's less, like, condensation on the windows. There is still some. Not as much, like this window was full of condensation before, like top to bottom. And there's definitely improvement. So I think that's maybe because I sealed in the gaps a bit better.
good. Okay, one of the most common comments that I've seen in the last couple videos when I've talked about the loft is that I should put the loft at the back of the cabin over top of the lockers because it will be the warmest there and then it will keep the cabin brighter and leave those gable end windows allowing more light in. And the reason I'm not is for the one vision I've had with this cabin since before it even started, which is when we first hiked up here and the thought to my mind was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a cabin here? And before it was even, there was a design in my head or a plan. The one thing that came to my mind was that whatever it is, whatever size, if it's just a little A-frame or something, I want to have a window at the front and my bed at the front so that I'm overlooking the lake as I go to sleep and wake up. So I'm definitely sacrificing being against the windows, which is colder, and blocking in that little bit of extra light from those windows. But I kind of just have to stick with that. It's been my goal from the beginning. I was gonna use lag bolts. I bought lag bolts and I can't find the uh, thing. I also bought structural screws, so I'm just gonna put that in. So there's that two by four that I need to work around. So I just have to figure out how to not screw it up. Too bad. A little bit's okay, not too bad. But it's time to uh, go outside with that one. Wishing I would have just flipped it to cut it because I sort of half drew this one last time and then I ran out of time. Brain. I've kept like a bit of snow on the deck this time. Last time I got rid of it all because I knew I would be using the snow to melt and like make water for myself so I kind of kept some. Now my 2 by 4 is here. This is the underside and so I needed to cut out an extra inch and a quarter. Okay, here's to hoping. Oh, hello. You're foggy. I'm gonna test fit it, dry fit it, and then um, I need to take it down. I'm gonna get it all in place, and then I need to take it down again to, I think how I'm gonna put the, the deck boards in, like the floorboards are gonna be inset into a little groove into that beam. So I gotta get it all in place and then make some marks and then take it down and then notch out and then pray. I just use a clamp to hold them together. Okay, so this was my plan, you guys. My plan is to use the edge of this beam for the boards to rest on. And then, obviously they need to be cut if I had one the right size. But then I'll cut a groove in along here so that lays flush to there and the reason why is because I didn't want to have something on the underside a strip of wood or something I wanted it from underneath to look really I don't know what the word is clean 
So it fits pretty good. I purposefully left it out from the 2x4 because I'm going to cover the 2x4s with some sort of trim. So I thought I would leave that space for that rather than try to like make that extra cut. I'm going with that plan because it's really the only plan I have. I don't I can't think of any other way to do it except adding a piece of wood, which I just don't think would look as nice. So I'm going to challenge myself to doing it the harder way. I just need to find something really long or a series of long boards to give myself a guide. This isn't wide enough to give myself a guide unless I add on. <sighs> Hold this thought. Yeah, I realize like, I don't know, is this really the best way to do this? I don't know. But at this point, my mane is bush, man. Get it? My brain is mush. But because my brain is mush, I set it backwards. My mane is bush. Get it? All right, moving on. Actually, I'm going to make some breakfast now. It's 1130, like 25 to 12. Ah, gotta hurry. <laughs> I'm in a hurry so uh, I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna put it all together and I pushed the beam out a little bit so I'm gonna lay all the boards in and then I'm gonna pound the beam in so that everything is fairly well sandwiched and then I'll put some either some nails or some screws bought these uh, Simpson strong tie things. I was going to put them on the inside corners, but I forgot. <gasps> oh my gosh, you guys. This is it. This is one of the big moments I've been waiting for. Now, I know many of you are going to question, as am I, the structural integrity of these boards by themselves, but I think what I'll just do is stick a piece of rigid foam, like the one inch foam I have left over, and that will help give it some rigidity because it will disperse the weight. Now, I thought I had screws. I do, I just have really long ones. So I think I'm just gonna nail these all down. supposed to have the loft done last night so that I could wake up in the morning and get a nice good coffee shot but uh, with the power of editing you can make it seem like that's the way it was and 
so begins my two and a quarter hour journey home. Now I've driven out there in winter conditions just like this many times now over the past few years and I've never had such a problem with the trestles. It happened to me once more but to a lesser extent and I was going dead slow and trying harder than I've ever tried before to stay in the already set tracks. I can't pinpoint it to any one thing in particular so perhaps it was just a combination of all the things including the fact that this is a newer truck for me. But in any event it was pretty scary and I sure hope it doesn't happen again. I did celebrate once I got out of the most dangerous zones because, well, it'd be rude if I didn't, right? <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Have a lovely week and I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, Lenny. Oh, the puppies. Oh, the puppies. Mommy's home. Mommy's home. I was at the cabin, huh? I was at the cabin. Remember you were there? You were there before, right? <laughs>